We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality nutrients and bioavailable forms your body can actually use. What you won't find? Sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, and artificial colorants. What I love most about Ritual is you'll always know what nutrients you're taking and where they come from, thanks to Ritual's one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. Even better, your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash ratchet to start your ritual today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Hello, welcome back. I'm in very good spirits this week. Many of you have been asking about my recovery after my second vaccine. I'm good. I'm totally back to normal. I'm back on my exercise routine. I am back into my May movement, which if you've been consistently listening to the show, you know that movement was my theme for May. I have no idea what I'm doing for June, but I'm fully back. I've climbed the Culver City stairs twice this week, which may be a third time today, depending on when I finish taping this podcast. I'm taping Thursday morning at 8.20 a.m. on the West Coast. To get to the top of the stairs, you can either do a a meandering hike, which is brutal. It's very steep on the way up, or you can just take the stairs, which is the most direct route. So I've started going up once via the trail. And then after that, I climb the stairs, which I don't do it all in once. I have to take breaks still, but I get there. I get there. That's the point. But my legs are killing me. But my ass looks good. Tummy looks good too. The ass is getting bigger. Tummy's getting smaller. Like we, we work in here. So, so I'm proud of my May movement. You know what kills me about those stairs? <laughs> people hike those stairs with their kids. I've seen little people as young as three going up the stairs. I'm like, some of those stairs are bigger than you are. Like they're steep. They're very steep stairs. But them kids be climbing them stairs. When I was out there yesterday, I was dying after like the third set of steps. And there was this black guy, little dudes, like five, seven, abs, all at like 10 abs. But he was running up and down the stairs. I watched him go up and down the stairs, like just me trying to get to the top. Dude went up four times and was running. I was like, look, (laughs) I want to be in shape. I want to be fit. I want to be healthy. But I was like, that's too healthy for me. I don't know if I'll ever reach that point. I'm not even setting a goal to reach that point. I'm just trying to get up the stairs one full round continuously with no breaks. We'll get there. It's going to be a process. But otherwise, I feel totally fine. No effects from the vaccine. It's just these legs, y'all. These legs. I will say this about hiking, though. The other day, some some good music got to me. I don't know what got into my head. Like, I just I decided to just drop down. And you know what? My knees are good money. I was like, is this from hiking? I don't know. I was like, they're not my 20-year-old knees. That was a different set of knees. But, like, I feel like I'm in, like, you know... 28-year-old knees, which is good. But I got down and did what I did, and then I got back up. No problems. I was like, hey, now. Hey, now. We on to something. But today we have a good episode. Not here for a long time, but here for a good time. Here for a good time. There's much going on in TV world. I'm not going to talk about everything because there's much. And I do the reviews on my social media, so I don't want to redo them here. But I wanted to talk about a couple of shows that are coming to us, sort of sooner than later. One of them is the Australian Bachelor franchise. For their Bachelorette this year, they've chosen the first bisexual woman. So the contenders are going to be men and women. We ain't there yet in America. We're not going to get there for a very long time. But I was like, oh, that, that's a twist. It's like I might have to activate my Express VPN so I can watch some good Australian TV to see what's going on with the Bachelorette over there. Brooke Blurton. She's 26 years old, and she's also the first indigenous woman to lead the franchise. So another first. Brooke says that her perfect person is someone that loves me for me. I hope they offer shared values and compassion for others. All the dreamy things. I'm so excited and hope that I finally find the person I've been waiting for. Brooke's a cute girl. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. 
She did say, I'm not too sure if Australia is ready for it. She says, I certainly am. If it makes people feel uncomfortable in any way, I really challenge them to think about why it does. I'm here for it. I also want to talk about this Sex in the City reboot. It came out recently that Mr. Big will also not be participating in the reboot. This is after it was announced that Samantha will not be there either. I'm like, what are y'all doing? What is the show without Mr. Big and Samantha? Is Carrie still married? I also read that they're adding four women of color to the cast, which they needed to. One of the big criticisms of Sex in the City, actually one of the reasons I wrote A Bell in Brooklyn, was because of the lack of women of color in Sex in the City. I'm like, you're in New York City, which is one of the most diverse cities in the world. It was hardly any black folks, hardly any people of color. That was one of the huge, huge criticisms of the show. But I'm just like, y'all adding all these new people and you're taking away two of the biggest characters of the show. What is this show going to look like? I'll tune in to see. I'll tune in for the first couple episodes to see what they're doing because I'm a huge Sex and the City fan. Although it hasn't held up well. If you've gone back and watched Sex and the City, say within like the last couple years, it doesn't hold up well at all. It was good for a moment in time. But I'm also kind of thinking, like, we got run the world now with the four black women up in Harlem. They're giving us story and they're giving us fashion. So I don't know. I want to know who's in the writer's room for this show. I hope they got some black people in there, some people of color who can make this show more diverse. I really don't want a bunch of white people writing black characters. That rarely ends well. So we'll see. And other TV news, news news, you've been following this um. Hullabaloo over Chris Cuomo advising his brother while being an anchor on CNN. I want to say this story came out last week. When I saw it on Facebook, they were calling it breaking news. Chris Cuomo was discovered to be on a call with other advisors helping his brother navigate his sex scandal, his sexual harassment scandal. And they were talking about what a conflict of interest it was. And I was like, eh feel like y'all trying to make a lot of news where there isn't news. Because when the scandal broke, Chris Cuomo, who obviously covers the news, he was like, well, you know, I'm very aware of the situation with my brother and I won't be discussing it for the obvious conflict of interest, which I thought was fair. Even if my family did some shit and I know they did some shit and I know they was dead wrong for the shit, I'm not going to use my platform to blast them. It's just, I'm just not. I still want to go to Thanksgiving. You can't blast your brother on television and then come to the Thanksgiving table and expect your mother to serve you. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But some of the press was making a really big deal about the conflict of interest and Chris Cuomo should step down. And I was like, in what world? The story came out last week. The Washington Post has an opinion piece about it today. And part of the title is, Does CNN Care? The CNN Worldwide President, Jeff Zucker, he acknowledged that Chris Cuomo made a mistake, but ain't no talk of firing Chris Cuomo. Them ratings too high. They're not getting rid of Chris. Not over this. But it said that on the call that Chris Cuomo, quote, encouraged his brother to take a defiant position and not resign from the governor's office, which Chris Cuomo offered an apology on air. He said, quote, it was a mistake because I put my colleagues here who I believe are the best in the business in a bad spot. I never intended for that. I would never intend for that. And I'm sorry for that. Mm. I mean, yeah, I guess. Because he's advising his brother to do one thing. And then the other anchors are reporting whatever his brother does as news. So I guess in that sense that a journalist on the network is shaping the news narrative. I get it. But then I'm also like, it's his brother. I don't know what more people expect. Maybe not to do it on the call. I don't know. I guess the part of the reason that folks are upset is because during the early days of the pandemic, Chris frequently interviewed his brother as part of his show. They had like a whole little banter. It was fun to watch. So I guess it's like, oh, you can make him a news story. You can interview him and talk about him when he's doing well. But when he's not doing so well, when he's in trouble, you have nothing to say. That's fair. I'm still not dragging my brother publicly. Not curse you out behind the scenes, but publicly? No. But that story doesn't really have a lot of traction. People are talking about it. But again, Chris Cuomo ain't going nowhere on CNN. Not TV, but something to watch nonetheless. Versus is back on May 30th. It's Swiss Beats versus Timberland. This is a rematch. I didn't watch the first one. That was an early versus, if not the first one. So I don't know who was the winner, quote and unquote, for that matchup. But I'll watch it. 
Swizz and Timberland, two of the best producers in the business. So I am looking forward to that this weekend. I don't have any plans for Memorial Day weekend. My friend is having a birthday party tonight. Patrice, Patrice Covington. She was on the show. She came on to talk about genius Aretha. She played Aretha's sister in the limited series on the History Channel. She did a great job. She looks so good on camera. I was very proud of her. I thought that was a really well done series. I'm also looking forward to Respect with Jennifer Hudson. That trailer came out recently. It looks good. It looks really good. Aretha had a lot of life. I'm not mad at all that she's getting a series, an eight-part series, and a film in the same year. I'm also looking forward. We talked about this, I think. The Mahalia Jackson films. There was one that came out on, was it Mother's Day or was it Easter? That one was okay. I love the actress. What's her name? Danielle from Orange is the New Black. She was also in The Color Purple on Broadway with Patrice. What is her name? Forgive me. I know there are jokes sometimes about how I mispronounce names. It's because I have notes, but I also just go on random tangents when I'm recording. So sometimes folks' names are in front of me and sometimes they ain't. Hmm. But you know what I'm talking about. Brown girl, cute girl, thick girl. She's really good. Her voice is amazing. But she was in a Mahalia Jackson TV film. And then I know there's one coming with Jill Scott and another one with Lettucey. Who, woo! We talked about this too. She was in a recent episode of Pose and she was singing. And I was like, woo, girl. I feel like I have that reaction every time I hear her sing. Like, I know she can sing. But then when I hear her, I'm just like, woo, girl. Like, I forgot. Not that I forgot. She just moves me. So I'm looking forward to that as well. I don't know what the dates on those, though. I don't know if they've been released yet. What else is going on? There's so much. I want to talk about Sister Liz Cambage. Now, she didn't do anything wrong. I wasn't familiar with her. She's a WNBA player. Three-time WNBA All-Star. She plays for the Las Vegas Aces. But she was at a game recently. I'm not sure exactly what the play was, but the coach for Connecticut, Kurt Miller, he was trying to get a call from an official made on Cambridge, and <laughs> the ref was ignoring him. And so he said to the ref, within Cambridge's earshot, he said, come on, she's 300 pounds. Sir? But, and so just to give this some context, one, Cambridge is not 300 pounds. She is a proud 235 pounds. She's also 6'8". So 235 on a 5 foot something woman looks much different on a 6'8 woman. She's perfectly lovely size. She looks athletic. She's an NBA player. She works out daily. Come on now. But the coach said what he said. And Cambridge, she had some words for that coach. Look, a good read will get you on folks' radar very quickly. Cambridge is a professional NBA player. is a professional librarian as well. She said, quote, something went down in today's game and I need to speak on it. Because if there's one thing about me, if you ever hear a black person say there's one thing about me, they about to get in your ass. She says, I will never let a man disrespect me ever, 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 especially a little white one. She continued, and I'm reading this from the room. You know, I like to cite my sources. She said, so to the coach of Connecticut, I'm sorry, little sir, man. I do not know your name, but the next time you try to call out a referee trying to get a call being like, come on, she's 300 pounds. I'm going to need you to get it right, baby. I'm weighing 235 pounds and I'm very proud of being a big bitch. Big body, big bends, baby. So don't ever try to disrespect me or another woman in the league. All right, Sister Cambridge. All right. She said what she said. In addition, she called Miller tiny and she demanded that he, quote, stop trying to protect his insecurities for a coach from another team to be yelling protected abuse because we can't do anything back. It's crazy to me. For his most inappropriate comments, the WNBA acted swiftly. They suspended Miller for one game and they fined him $10,000. He said, quote, I regret what I said in the heat of the moment. And I want to sincerely apologize to Liz and the entire ACES organization. I understand the gravity of my words and have learned from this. You should. Never should have let it come out your mouth to begin with, sir. Oh, let me go back for a second. We were talking about CNN. 
They finally fired Rick Santorum. We've talked about him a couple times. Remember his comments about Native Americans didn't contribute or contributed very little to American culture? CNN let him go. There was a huge outcry about it. And apparently none of the anchors wanted to book him on their shows after his comments. Chris Cuomo did after his comments about Native Americans. I didn't see that episode. I haven't been watching CNN with the same regularity that I used to. I used to have CNN on all the time as background noise, if nothing else. So I didn't see that episode. But by all accounts, it was a fucking disaster. And Santorum, I don't think, has been on CNN airwaves since then. But CNN quietly let him go last week. So good riddance. Goodbye. Sayonara. Au revoir. Is there something interfering with your happiness or maybe something preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, you are not alone. Most people can relate, including me. The good news is if you need help, BetterHelp is here to, well, help. BetterHelp's mission is making professional counseling accessible, affordable, and convenient. So anyone who struggles with life's challenges can get help anytime, anywhere. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll connect in a safe and private online environment, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. My favorite thing about BetterHelp is that it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp's licensed professional counselors specialize in depression, stress, anger, anxiety, and so much more. And everything you share is confidential. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ratchet. Building a presentation is a daunting task, especially if design doesn't come naturally. Presenting is much more nuanced than throwing together bullets and charts. Part of the challenge is making the experience memorable for an audience. So making presentations wasn't something I really enjoyed or felt confident doing. I just don't have a lot of experience there. But now that I have Canva Pro, creating and sharing presentations is easier than ever. Canva Pro is the easiest way to create presentations like a pro. Whether you're presenting to your team, students, or clients, Canva Pro has beautiful layouts for every industry, theme, and project. If you don't know where to start, Canva Pro can help inspire your creativity with thousands of free designer-made templates that are totally customizable. Thanks to Canva Pro's time-saving tools and editing features, I can create high-quality, high-resolution presentations in minutes, and they look stunning. I always get compliments on my Canva Pro presentations. Plus, I can design, collaborate, share, and present on any device, which is great when I'm on the go. Canva Pro comes with endless extras like 75 million premium photos, videos, audio, and graphics. You get all this and more in just one Canva Pro subscription. My favorite Canva Pro feature is that it saves all my documents in a convenient place. I never have to go searching for my latest file. Wow your audience with Canva Pro, the easiest way to create presentations. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial. Just go to canva.me slash ratchet to get your free 45-day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash ratchet. Canva.me slash ratchet. There's a Paula White story circulating on Facebook. At the time I'm recording, it hasn't made its way to Twitter. And when I checked, I couldn't find anything amongst the news sources. But her ex-husband, I think they divorced in 2007, he got on Facebook yesterday. And I don't know what jumped into him. Maybe he was guided by the African angels. Remember Paula White? She was Trump's spiritual advisor. And during the election, she called on the African angels to come help Trump win the election. Well, the the angels didn't show up, not for her. Because obviously, thankfully, Trump is no longer in the White House. 
<laughs> I was talking about this on my Facebook page early this morning. I've been up since like six o'clock. And um, <laughs> this woman said, look, Paula didn't know. African angels run on CP time. They might not show up when you call, but they do show up. But the angels have shown up with tea, with much tea. So Paula's husband yesterday, he made this update on Facebook and he used the hashtag Paula White Lies. This is from Randy White. He posted a picture of he and Paula at an event. She's looking down. He's holding a microphone. I won't read too much into just one image. But of, of Paula, Randy says, For 10 years, I have watched people listen to her lies. This image is from the night she begged me to tell people we were getting a divorce. I said no, but her mind was made up. She sent 10 men to my house and told me how wrong I was for divorcing her. I said, men, you were talking to the wrong person. I wanted to stay married, but when she had at least five multiple affairs to all married men, she needed another way out. I can tell you now that 80% of what she has said, preached, and wrote about isn't even close to the truth. Three exclamation points. I know the whole truth because I had to live it. Want more? Let me know. Hashtag betrayal. Hashtag Paula White lies. Now the church that they belong to, the Without Walls International Church, they released a statement many hours after that Facebook post went up. They said last night the Facebook account of Bishop Randy A. White of Without Walls International Church was hacked. As a result, a post of a very unfortunate nature was posted under his account. I'd just like to let you know that post is still up at the time of this recording, many hours later. The post continues, We at Without Walls International Church are aware of these events, as well as other recent attacks active in nature to personally destroy our pastor and our church. We are currently working not only to make sure this does not happen again, but to identify the person responsible for these slanderous posts. They go on. We want to say that Paula White was a vital part of the success of our church and she has moved on with her life, ministry, and so has Bishop Randy A. White. We wish nothing but the best for her. Bishop Randy has a good relationship with Pastor Paula. They are both focused on building God's kingdom. Let us all move on from these distractions and focus on the work of the Lord. Prayers and blessings the staff, pastors, and congregation of Without Walls International Church. Woo! That's a lot. I mean, it's possible. It's possible the account got hacked. Who knows? Who knows? But we shall know soon. Because if Randy White is feeling that kind of way, we you putting shit like that on Facebook, there's more to come. I'm looking forward to seeing what, if anything, Pastor Randy has to say. So we'll be keeping an eye on that story. I don't, I don't know much about Paula White. She didn't pop on my radar until the African Angels thing. And then she's often been accused of being a racist. I think there was something where she compared Black Lives Matter to the KKK. And then, you know, she's Trump's spiritual advisor. So I'm not really willing to give her the benefit of the doubt here. But we'll see. Sometimes ex-husbands do say crazy, untrue things. That's possible. But we shall see. We shall see about Paula White. Five married men? You couldn't find no single men to adulterate with? Allegedly. Allegedly. That's important. Sometimes I just don't have the time or energy to cook, especially something healthy. There's so much going on between writing scripts, working on this podcast, shipping merchandise. I just get overwhelmed. But honestly, I don't feel great when I end up eating takeout for almost every meal. This all changed once I found Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious food, all built on organic fruits and vegetables, right to your door. It takes literally minutes to prepare, and I never have to think twice if the food I'm eating is good for me. Daily Harvest is ready when you are. Everything stays fresh in your freezer until you're ready to enjoy it, so you waste less food, too. No need to overthink any of your meals for the week with Daily Harvest. Smoothies for breakfast, crisp flatbreads for lunch or dinner, and food that's perfect for cooler weather, like their perfectly roasted harvest bowls and soups. I love the sweet potato and wild rice hash harvest bowl. Daily Harvest never uses preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything, including their recently launched almond milk, which is made of only almonds and a dash of sea salt. That's it. 
This is super convenient because I'm always stocked up whenever I need almond milk for my smoothies. Get started today. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code RESPECTABLE to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code RESPECTABLE for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Dailyharvest.com. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality nutrients and bioavailable forms your body can actually use. What you won't find? Sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, and artificial colorants. Plus, the fresh taste and delayed release capsule design make taking your vitamins easy. What I love most about Ritual is you'll always know what nutrients you're taking and where they come from, thanks to Ritual's one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. Ritual is now available for women, men, and teens. Ritual's multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different life stages. Even better, your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping. You can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription at any time. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash ratchet to start your ritual today. Last but finally not least, I want to talk about this new series on Netflix called High on the Hog. To me, it hasn't been getting a lot of promo, but it's a really, really good show. A former food writer and sommelier. What is his name? Because I reached out to Netflix and was like, can you come on the show? Steven Satterfield. It's a black dude. Food writer and a sommelier. He's interested in exploring the origins of African-American food. His theory is that American food has its roots in African-American food and that African-American food has its roots in Africa. So the first episode of the show, he goes to Benin and he pairs up with Dr. Jessica B. Harris who is a leading authority on African food. She used to be a travel editor for Essence back in the 70s. You know how I feel about Essence alums. But he pairs up with Dr. Jessica and Benin, and they go to one of the markets, and they talk about staples in the African diet, like okra and yams and peanuts and watermelon and rice, black-eyed peas and other beans as well. And he talks about how all of this shows up in the staples of African-American cooking and Southern cooking. He talks about food appropriation. It's like a lot of things that we think of as Southern cooking are African-American cooking by way of Africa. It's fascinating and true. I don't know if I've talked about this or maybe I wrote about it. I'm sure I've shared this and I'm not quite sure where, but I remember two instances. One, when I went to Bahia in Brazil, which I think was the largest, if not one of the largest ports for Africans coming to the Americas. Brazil actually imported, for lack of a better word, more Africans to put in slavery into their country than anywhere else in the world. They have the largest population of black folks outside Africa, even more so than the United States. But I went down to Bahia, which is like the black part of Brazil. I mean, black folks are everywhere, but it's like super black, like Atlanta or Detroit black. And there was a festival going on. I think it was like an Afro-Brazilian festival. They have several. And it looked like anything that you would see in Brooklyn. They were selling t-shirts and and there were images of Tupac. And they had these shirts that were like, I love my hair. I love my nose. I love my lips. But it was just in Portuguese, but with the exact same font. And there were food vendors, fried chicken, watermelon, a bunch of things that you would eat at any black folks festival in the U.S. And I was like, looky here. And then we went to this really nice restaurant. And my friend who lives in Brazil, he was like, you have to have the mokeka. I have no idea what mokeka is, but he was like, you have to have the mokeka. So we ordered the mokeka and it arrives at the table. And it's like, they describe it as like a fish stew. I take a spoonful. That ain't nothing but gumbo with black eyed peas in it. I was like, wait, wait a minute. This is all too familiar. Same thing happens when I'm in Ghana. Me and my friend Davida, you know what? She needs to come on the show. But I go to Ghana once a year. Davida does these very personalized trips for African-Americans who want to go to Ghana for the first time. By way, she is Ghanaian by way of Atlanta. She was raised in both. She's been back and forth for most of her life. 
but she does these trips to Ghana and I've hosted a couple of them for her. And on the last trip that we went, we went to a local restaurant and she was like, you know, we can go to all these fancy places that cater to Americans, but I want to take you to a place where Ghanaians would come and eat on their lunch hour. So we go to this restaurant and I'm not familiar with anything on the menu. The descriptions sound very familiar, but I'm like, I'm on another continent. I'm in another country. I don't expect it to taste the way things would taste at home. So I'm going to order and we're going to see what we get. So I ordered the okra stew and the server said, would you like some crab? And I was like, sure thing. I want to say like the extra crab was like $2. Which I was like, sure, all the crab you can manage, ball out. So she brought my stew and she places it in front of me and I have a taste. And I was like, again, this ain't nothing but gumbo. No black eyed peas in this one. But I was like, this is gumbo. I'm eating gumbo. This tastes like what my mama make. This tastes like what my relatives down in New Orleans make. Different kick with the same basic ingredients. So I was like, Africa, Brazil, America, same shit, different continent. The thing in common, it's the same people. So in episode two of High on the Hog, the host is with another expert. They're making a meal that would have been made by enslaved people in Charleston in the 17 and 1800s. And they're making it in an authentic way. They're outdoors. They've got this single pot. And it was like, you know, put some tomatoes in the pot. Now put some onions in the pot. I'll put this seasoning in the pot and put this in the pot. And I was like, oh, so we've been eating gumbo for a long time here. This looks just how my mom makes gumbo in our kitchen. This is wild. It's a really good show because we're talking about food, but food is culture. So in order to talk about the origins of this food, you've got to talk about the culture. You've got to talk about the people. You that you got to talk about why black folks eat pig's feet because pigs were prime eating. The white folks didn't eat the feet or the ears or the intestines or the head. So black folks who was hungry were like, well, this is the meat we got. We're going to season it up and make it taste right. You know how we do. Make a way out of no way. But I was like, look at this here. And then I'm not going to give everything away because I actually fell asleep in the middle of episode three, not because it was boring, but because I told y'all I've been hiking and I go to bed in general pretty early. That's why I'm up at six o'clock every day to keep East Coast hours. They talked about the first famous chefs in North America. And they were two enslaved men. One, Hercules, belonged to George Washington. And then the other one belonged to Thomas Jefferson. The one that Thomas Jefferson kept enslaved He was actually trained as a French chef, and he is responsible for bringing macaroni and cheese to the United States. Brother, be a blessing. Be a blessing to all. What was his last name? Hemings. He was Sally Hemings' older brother. Sally Hemings, who's often referred to as the mistress of Thomas Jefferson, but was owned by him, which means that she didn't have agency, which means that she couldn't give consent. So she bared six children, at least six, by her rapist. I hate when they say that she's his mistress, like they were on equal pairing. Stop. But her older brother was Thomas Jefferson's cook. And again, one of the first celebrity chefs in the Americas. Because, you know, there's a black man cooking French food. And, you know, there's no plane, so it's hard to get to France, even on a boat. It's very expensive and very time consuming. So most people didn't have access to French food. So you go to Thomas Jefferson's house and you get not only French food, but French food served by a black man. It's a lot. But there was a really interesting tidbit um, from George Washington, whose chef, Hercules, was this really amazing cook. George Washington took him from Mount Vernon in Virginia to Philadelphia. And Pennsylvania had a law that if an enslaved person resided for more than six months within their state limits, then that person was automatically freed. So George Washington's trifling ass, every five and a half months or so, would take the people he was enslaving He would take them back to Mount Vernon and then bring them back to Pennsylvania so that the clock would reset and they wouldn't be considered freed people. And so his chef, Hercules, became so famous and so adored, George Washington became afraid that he would run away. So he eventually sends him back to Mount Vernon and he puts him in the fields to work. So he remembers his place. But Hercules did get the fuck out. He ran away. They believe he ended up in New York City as a free man. He was not captured 
and enslaved again. Then they talked to a couple guys out in California, in LA, who were running a restaurant based on the recipes that Hercules and the Hemming chef created. It's a really fascinating documentary. It gave me very Anthony Bourdain vibes. The host is um, it's kind of like an awkward black dude, but in like an endearing way. He asks all the questions that the audience wants to know, and he takes in the proper awe of everything. He's really good. So I hope that while this is a limited series based on African-American cuisine, I hope that Netflix knows, like, you got a potential hit on your hands in the wake of Anthony Bourdain's death. And I love that dude. My God. I cried like somebody I knew died when I heard that he, um, he was no longer with us. But this guy is really good, and the camera work is really good, and the production is really good. They find the obvious, but they also find the offbeat. It's a very smart and engaging show, and it brings in culture and history and people and conversations, and it just all wraps it up into this amazing bow. Oh, that was my thought. In the wake of Anthony Bourdain's death, many shows have tried to recreate what he did, but not to his standard, but I feel like this one meets it dead on. Different take. The host has a very different personality, but it works. And like when it's working, let it work. So like we have this one limited series about the history of African-American food. But really, I will watch this man and this production team put together anything and bounce all around the world and tell me about food. You can go to Brazil. You can go to Asia. You can go wherever you want to go. I'll watch. I think a lot of other people will, too. Y'all need to promote this show better. Like, this is not a paid promo. Like, I just really, really like the show and think everyone should be watching it because it's really, really, really good. I'm just saying. So that is our episode for this week. I told you, we're not here for a long time. Here for a good time. I will be back next week. I'm trying to line up some really good interviews. It's been hard because of the holidays. Everyone's sort of checked out already. So we'll see who's up for a chat. In the meantime, enjoy your long weekend. Be safe because folks is getting wild. Now the outside is open, open. So be safe. And if you haven't picked up your Don't Waste Your Pretty Tees, please do. They are available on DemetriaLLucas.com. And if you need some ratchet and respectable in your life between now and the next episode, you can always follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I've been using my Twitter a little more lately. But you can follow me on one of those three if you need a little extra in your life between now and the next episode. Thank you as always for listening. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye.